what is going on guys <laughs> welcome to the wednesday night live stream bit of a pre-warning i'm a little bit sick today i was almost gonna skip tonight's stream but decided to do more just like an open free for one free for all one today instead so if anyone wants to jump into the hangouts with me feel free otherwise i can answer just some random questions that some of you guys may have Greetings, what's going on, Steve? Raven Cobb, Davis, Braveheart, Reef Daddy, Acid Brito. Hopefully, you guys are all doing well. All right, if that link doesn't work, let me know. If anyone wants to join and chat live, feel free to hop on. What's going on, Claudius? <sighs> Six streaming. Da -da -da. Um, so TJ was asking some questions earlier about hair LG that he was kind of battling. So. Quick touch on that one. I know that this seems to be a fairly common one that people tend to deal with. Do do do. Reef with Russell, Tim Allen, Lord of the Night, Doctor Walsh, Magic, Reefaholics, Gow Gow. Um, welcome guys. So hair algae, that is one that can be a bit of a punk. It's usually caused from too much light or too much nutrients or a mix of the two. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. And with those, so if you have far too long of a photo period, that is something that can promote certain types of like a hair algae. Um, again, if your nutrients are way too on your tank, that could be another thing. So there's ways to fix it. But te that tends to be more around the actual cause or the source of it. Now to actually remove it, remove it, is to, what's going on? Padjed, I don't even know how to say your name. Panajeran. <laughs> Welcome. Um, Dublin, Ireland, nice. Um, so if you actually do have hair algae, you want to remove it. Um, first thing is manually re remove as much as you possibly can. Um, so grab it, pull it out of the tank. You know, ideally if you're doing a water change, just suck out the water change hose. Now there's certain creatures that will eat it, like turbo snails, or one all started eating it is um, a tuxedo urchin. Like there are the small little urchins. Those guys are like ferocious at it. I once before with my refugium, I wanted to clean it out and it was full of algae, full of all the stuff. I put one of those guys in there within a week, it looked like brand new and spotless. So those guys are awesome, awesome with it. Welcome to the channel, Chris. Um, so if you have another few couple ways to, to deal with it, if you want to kill it directly, you can spot treat it with peroxide. But that one, again, make sure you don't do one mil per 10 gallons. It's kind of your max. Don't go over that. Vibrant also does work on it. I used to kill bubble algae mainly, and I also got rid of my hair algae in the nano tank when I had that. So that is another potential option. Um, Tim Allen, what can I do about my LPS corals? Try my best to feed them right after my lights go out, but I never notice feeding tentacles out. So generally, when I feed my tank, actually, first question: What are you feeding them, Tim? So majority of the food that I feed my corals is mysis or canalis. I think it's called canalis. Um, so I, that's what I feed my fish. So when I melt all my stuff in, I basically feed the fish in the tank and all the leftover particles, I'll swirl that around the tank and just broadcast feed it for the corals. So normally the fish food goes in a few minutes later, you'll start to see all the tentacles come out because all the different corals in the tank are going to sense that aminos or whatever's mixed in with like the mices and the frozen food. So that's been pretty good. Um, no direct topic today. It's kind of a free for all. I'm a bit sick. I didn't have the mental capacity to think up of a topic or anything else, so I just answer some random questions. And if you guys want to hop on the Hangouts, feel free. And if that link doesn't work, let me know. Hopefully it does. Uh, reef rides or mysis? I actually fed both last night. Um, I'm going to say 90% of the time I just feed mysis. The other 10% of the time I'll mix in canalis or reef roids or I have a ton of different random foods. Speaking of refroids, I got one right here. So, like, I'll mix that in once in a while. I don't do it very often, but, you know, every, like, week or two, I'll mix it in and just something to mix it up for the fish and all the creatures in the tank. Uh, speaking of vibrant, have you ever noticed any negative effects? I have not. Um, for me, it took about six weeks until I actually saw changes from vibrant. And I believe the instructions said dose every other week, and I think I dose it every week, so I may have possibly been overdosing it. I have to check that one. Uh, snails, I have lots of them clean it crew. They just started to crawl out of the tank. <laughs> snails can be adventurous if you don't have a top on it. 
Um, some creatures, if they're crawling out, it may be because they're searching for food. If you got lots of food in your tank, it just may be them exploring. But yeah, tops on. Keep your snails on too. I remember in my freshwater days, I had these little freshwater crabs. And that came up from high school one day, there was a little crab running across the floor. I'm like, oh, you little punks. They climbed up the airline, out the top. So a good lid helps for many things. Um, do you feed your fish after dark or just before? Eh, usually the lights are on. Usually it's just evening at some point. Um, if you do come up to your tank, the corals generally, a lot of them will have feeding tentacles out after the lights are out. Like a lot of the acans, certain ones will. Now, I still find that if you put in some foods in your tank, they're going to sense that. And, you know, 20 minutes or so later, those feeding tentacles will come up. Um, what's going on, Harkins? So what I do is I, um, I let my, f okay, when I feed the tank, I put my tank in the feed mode. My return pumps stay off for like 45 minutes. Um, and then my power heads go into low flow for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I usually, once in a while, I'll spot feed, but a lot of time I'll just broadcast feed. So the pumps are low for like 20 minutes. So the food's all floating around the tank. It keeps it suspended. The big fish get it. And then all the little particles. So after that 20 minutes, the power has ramped back up and they're going to keep everything suspended and flying all over the tank. So there's like a good half an hour period where these particles are just flying all over the tank and give it time for all the fish to catch them. Uh, yep, so no issues with Vibrant. My There's only been one time I've really used it, and that was just on the Nano, mainly to get rid of Bubology, and that was a big thing. Um, if I'm thinking of cycling rock in a container, should I be thinking about how to cycle the sand? Um, I wouldn't worry about the sand as much. As long as you have... Your rock cycle, that will be the main thing. When I originally did my first version of the shallow reef, I had all my rock in a brute container, like a big brute trash can with water for like a month before I even had the tank. I just dumped in a bowl of Dr. Tim's, fed a little bit of ammonia here and there, and just kept it pre-cycled that way once everything was and it was good. Um, M. Nelson, are you still running ozone? I don't have an ORP probe. I don't know if mine's doing anything. My skimmate still stinks. Okay, yes, I am still running Ozone. Um, my my ORP probe isn't hooked up at the moment, so I'm pretty much in the same boat. However, my tank's now bigger, and I'm still running at the same level, so I figure I'm fine. Um, so I do run it. I have a 0 to 50 milligram unit. I run it right smack dab in the middle, so about 25 milligrams, and I run it for 4 or 5 hours a night into my skimmer from like 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. or something along those lines. And it's still working well. If you... Oh, yeah, so speaking of that... That makes a huge difference on skimmate not stinking. I was tank sitting for a buddy and went to go clean his skimmer and I was just about passed out. It was nasty. All right. Uh, okay, Storm, do you spot feed your corals or just put food in the water? I do both. I'm going to say 80% of the time I just broadcast feed the tank. You know, they're 10 or 20%. I'll shoot some at corals. Like once in a while, I'll specifically shoot at my cans or the Ghani Poras or something like that. So a bit of a mix. What's going on, Rip Van Winkle? Um, I have high ammonia, nothing's died. I can't figure out where it's coming from. It's been high for a couple of weeks. How old's your tank, Scott B? What's going on, Mark? Sherry? Dave's Nano Tank. What's up, Dave? Reef Tews, you sound sick. Yes, I am. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I'm actually not bad this morning. I felt like death this morning. I was literally like headache and sore throat, and now it's just a bit of a raspy throat. My hacking coughing starting to tone down, so it's getting better. <laughs> Using voice to text, apologize in advance, no worries. Uh, what's the best algae reactor or refugium for little space for refugium? It will react to do the same job. How about pause living in the reactor? Okay, so three basic options you got your refugium, you got your turf scrubber, and you got your algae reactor. Now, each one has its own pros and cons, and also depends on how much space you have to work with. Um, Chato Reactor is your easiest DIY one because you can just take basically an old clear reactor, put some lights around it, and throw some Chato on it. They do have commercial ones. There's like the Pax Bellum, and my buddy has whatever the other popular brand one is. And they definitely do work well. Um, Turf Scrubber is probably your biggest bang for your buck for your size. Where a Chato Reactor... They say they're really good for pods. I have seen pods of mine, but not as much as I've noticed in the Chato reactor. So I think it does work for pods, but I don't. It's hard, still hard to say how well it does, but definitely does. Uh, do you run a dehumidifier in your home during the winter months? I do not. I figure my tank evaporates a gallon a day. I did run one in my room the last couple of nights just because of being sick. What's going on, Stephen? 
Good morning, Riff fan. Getting windy in here in New York City. Yeah, it's cold out there for you guys. Whew. It's about zero or I guess 30F here-ish for you guys. It's not too bad, but out there it seems really cold. Hey, Dave, how's your Nero 5 doing in the tank? Is the dry side magnet doing okay in the back chamber submerged? So I've had my dry side, dry side, in the back chamber for three, four months now. Looks brand new still. So, okay. They don't, they don't say it's submersible. However, if you look at the wet side, look at the dry side, they look pretty darn similar. And I was thinking about it. If you're manufacturing a product, it's much easier to just make the same thing twice rather than have different molds and different pieces to make all these, right? So it's probably easier for them to make the exact same magnets put on their different little padded thing on the side. So I'm going to, I personally don't think there's an issue with it. I mean, do so your own risk, keep an eye on it. But so far, my Neuro5 has been working awesome, and mine's been hanging out in the back chamber. Perfect way to hide it on an all-in-one. That's been good. Windy and freezing in Maryland. That does sound cold. Hello from Australia. What's going on, Ozzy Dan? Daughter is asking if you name your fish. Most of my fish have names. My wife actually named a good chunk of them. So I should do a video on this one day. So before we had a dog, she really wanted an animal. So some of our fish have very odd names. Like the clownfish was like Mr. Fluffy Paws and all these random names. So a lot of them are very strange names. And like the, what was the other one? Mr. Fluffy. The Bangai Cardinal, like one's Maid, one's Butler. Bob's the Powder Blue Tang. Some of them have just very normal names. A lot of them are very oddball ones. Um... <laughs> it's warm here, you lucky guy. Alright guys, I'm going to drop the hangout one more time if anyone wants to jump in on the live side with me. Or if you guys got any questions, feel free to ask away. My wife named my fish too, yep, exactly. Um, the yellow tang is Kool-Aid, because he's like, boo yeah, and pops out all the time. Uh, I'm, I'm liking on the Rasa's name right now. The new yellow Midas Blenny's name is Moose. <laughs> what else we got? I'm mind blanking on half the names right now. I blame being sick. That and she picked most of the names up. But yeah, I definitely do. It's good to get your spouse to name your fish. Get some more into the hobby. Florida is a cool 52. Sounds rough out there, TJ. <laughs> um, those 3D printed bras holders. Okay, speaking of those... I have been, people have been asking me literally, I get asked once a week about those 3D printed Voss holders. And. Hello, my display game is Hey, what's happening? Yeah. Welcome. I'm mind blanking on half the names right now. I've only been. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. That oh, is this is. Wait, who is this? Who is this? <laughs> this is Devin. Let's name your fish. Get some more. Oh, I hear. I, oh, yeah, mute the YouTube in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Florida is a cool 52. <laughs> hey, but I want to listen to Reef, dude. I know, right? It's like do it's like stereo sound. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Wait, so is this Reef, dude? I'm confused. Yeah, it is. Are well, you live? Yeah. You're live too now. Well, your voice is. <laughs> You're on the stream? Yeah. Oh, hey. Once I figure out how to get the screen sharing going, give me a sec here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay, where's the small? Having a beer, making some Fido. <laughs> there you go. What's going on, buddy? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> I'm a bit sick now. I apologize. My voice is a bit raspy here. Oh, I understand. It's so I'm confused. Right? You're live. How are you doing with Google Hangout at the same time? I I got all kinds of black magic I do to make it all work. <laughs> you sure do. Yep. I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Are you feeding t Fido or are you making Fido? No, I'm. Uh, so I'm making Fido from the two little fishes Fido plan. Ah, does it work pretty yeah. well? just ran out uh yeah it seems to work like a charm it even seems to reduce the amount of algae i get on my class so i actually have heard people say it will reduce nitrates and other stuff and i haven't really dosed enough to test it so it's kind of interesting i'm curious which is funny because people also call it phosphate in a bottle <laughs> <laughs> yep it is surprising well Wait, so how are you doing this dude <laughs> you live yeah <laughs> am i on the stream then yeah on there. Oh. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, man. No problem. 
it's fun. But you're answering questions at the same time. Oh, oh, I'm literally live on the stream. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> live answering questions, it all it all comes together. It's like movie ah. movie magic. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yep. Yeah. So just finishing up making the Fido using some old algae bar and bottles. Nice. Excellent. Uh, you know. Solid plan. Got some uh, fish eggs. Ah. Ready to go. Nice. Feed in, the yeah. feed in the tank, special blend yeah. of algae and fish eggs. Exactly right. So how often do you feed your tank Fido? Um, you know what? Recently it's been more because my nitrates and phosphates have dropped pretty significantly mm -hmm. um, because I've been using GFO. Yeah. So more as of late to try to keep things up. Mm -hmm. But I'd say every other day, if not every day. Mostly okay. every other day. Nice. That's pretty good. I mean, I opened the YouTube and now I'm like, hey, <laughs> wait a minute. That's me in the background. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fun. It's good. I don't know. I decided to do an open one if anyone wants to join and hang out today. Yeah, I love it. I was kind of, I don't know. I was kind of sick and I was like, ah, I don't have the energy to come up with the topic today. <laughs> yeah, I'll be happy to take over for you. Perfect. Although I have no idea what I'd say. What else you got for show and tell? <laughs> uh, oh, I have an Alexa right next to me. Or mm -hmm. She woke up. Calm down. Go away. <laughs> Um, and I use it to control all of my filters and, ah. and such. Do you have so I to turn off filters mm -hmm. so that I can feed Fido. Nice. Do you have smart plugs for it all? Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. People are skeptical about, I've noticed. Wow. Like, people don't like to trust them. <laughs> <laughs> because they think so. Alexa's spying on them or because they don't trust the plugs and the smart so stuff? I think they think it's going to fail on them, but... Mm. What I've found is they'll fail on. So at worst case scenario, you know, everything stays on. Yeah, not a big deal. That's yeah. fair. I have, I have like two smart plugs, which I use for like the Christmas tree and whatever else. And yeah, so far they just seem to be working flawless. So far. Yeah, yeah. no complaints. It's been great. Nope. You know what, I'm curious too. I Well, I don't know how I'd point you to it, but mm -hmm. I just got a yellow frag that it looks like a Parades. I just can't ID it. So I'm trying to figure out anybody knows what it is. I wonder, can I, I can't really turn my laptop to it. Yeah. And I also can't see anything except for this like <laughs> solid 30 second lag. Yeah, I know. That's the hard part. Yeah, exactly. But yep. yeah, I got this very interesting, it's like golden yellow. That's kind of cool. What's the yeah. shape? Like, what does it look like? So it, it looks like a leptoceros. That's my hunch. Let's mm -hmm. see, actually take a picture. Perfect. Um, my hunch is leptoceros. I got some algae on this side, even though I yeah. just said I don't have much algae. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Hopefully, this is somewhat entertaining for people. Oh, for sure. Okay, so. What do we got? Let's see. It's not a great picture. That's okay. We'll work with it. But I got this guy. Yeah, that looks like a lepto from what I can see. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. Leptoceros. It basically... Um, seems like it's just not doing the, like, creating lips like Leptoceros mm -hmm. seems. Well, there, there's some that will just kind of encrust flat, and there are other ones that will get, like, the bumpiness, so it depends on what type it is. Oh, okay, yeah. so I wonder if it's just a flat Leptoceros. I think I got a solid deal, too. If you can believe it, I got it at Petco. $50. Nice. <laughs> there you go. You can find some gems. You never know. Yeah, so true. Somebody a minute ago was asking about that Voss water bottle holder mount, which I get asked about this pretty much every week for the last six months. Oh, so yeah. I, I'm finally working on a design for it. So I'm still working out the details, but I was talking to the guy from Vivid Creative that makes the random flow generator nozzles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I design it, would you print and deal with shipping it? Because shipping from Canada is like ridiculous. So I'm like, he could probably print and ship it for the price cost me to ship something. So we'll see. So I'm, right. I'm working on some ideas. You're in Canada, right? Yeah. Ah, see, okay. I was wondering about the Celsius comment. Yeah, yeah. That's, I always do. Well, I usually say Fahrenheit since it's like 80% US on my stream. but Currently, you can see there's a little thermometer back there. Yeah. It's 16 degrees, which is about, what, negative 26 Celsius? That sounds cold. <laughs> that sounds cold. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. Uh, someone in the comments was saying, could be a 24K lepto. So that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, I saw some on Tidal Gardens, and they were 60 bucks. so... Steal the deal? Yeah, I can't complain about that. Yeah, I've had some, just one of my LFSs. They, they like, never name corals, nothing. It's always random, but, you know, you can, you can find some gems. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say Alexa, turn off power heads. Okay. There we go. Done. Nice. Now I can feed the fish eggs. This is actually the first time I'm ever feeding fish eggs. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> nice. Where'd you get them from? Petco. <laughs> oh, nice. There you I go. I have a really good LFS, but Petco is so convenient. It's right outside my work. Nice. And best. Everybody loves them. There you go. Perfect. So far, so good. I've had um like oyster feast. I think it is before, and yeah, everything seemed to just go for it, which is awesome. Yeah. 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 I've heard even corals love them. Let's see if the Duncans are a fan. Mm. Of course, Duncans will pretty much eat anything, so I have to imagine they will. Yeah, they're pretty happy. They're pretty easy going. Yeah. So here's a question. How often do you feed your corals? Oh, man. I would say more lately with the low nutrients, mm -hmm. but on average, once a week. Okay, well, that's a good amount. Not super often, yeah. Mm -hmm. They well, you know, they get most of their nutrients from Zozendelia, right? So it yep. doesn't need to be every day, and obviously that would kill the water quality. So yep. every four to, four days to a week, I'd say. Okay. No, that's a good amount. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Easy with the stuff of Alex on the live stream. People always complain I like mess oh. with their setups when I do a video on it. I hate that too. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I, I should rename my my mrs a to something else <laughs> yeah it's true you can name it computer what else oh, there's a couple names you can give it i, I wish you could name it whatever you wanted i saw a really cool project it was like anti don't spy on me google and alexa and it, you like build this little board and you put on top of it and it basically i don't know if it does white noise or what it does but it it, mm -hmm. it, it basically can't hear anything until you give it whatever the new code name is you pick when you could tell that one or whatever you want i was like, I like yeah that's kind of cool it's like hmm, we have to build one of these. It's gonna be good. Uh, hey guys, how to get rid of ver vermid snails? I hear it about tear down my rock. Those are the little two berm snails. I'm certain there. Um, there's not really an easy way to get rid of them. Most people say you can just put super glue in the little hole. You can break it off or put a dab of super glue in it. But they tend to come back, so it's a bit of a battle to finally get rid of them in the long term. Yeah, actually, I've had luck. Um, if it's on a rock or a frag that you can pull out, mm -hmm. I've really taken wire cutters or even a bone cutter if you have it yep. and just pulled out the frag and chopped it off. Yeah. So physically break it or super glue it are your options. What's good, reefers? Everything's good. How are you doing, business? Here. You want to join business? Hop on in. Minus four. Da, 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 da. Mm. So, design I'm working on, trying to make a modular version so you can, like, put together however many you want and do, like, little end caps so you can, like, like mount it nicely in the end and stuff. So, I've been 3D printing models the last few days and keep tweaking it, the designs. It's really getting there. So that'll be coming. That noise you just heard was me taking a screenshot because I feel famous. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> right now. That, that was great. You're like, what? I'm on? Yeah? Live? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Uh, that's awesome. It's fun. So, what what else is exciting happening in with your tank, your world? Well, I'm glad I finally got my nutrients lower. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at like 25 to 45 for so this tank's only about six months old. Yeah. So for the first three or four months, they were always hovering around 25 to 45 mm -hmm. uh, parts per million. Yep. But recently, now they're at like Four. So, would, so, so what did you do differently? Um, I got Marine Pure. Um, mm -hmm. So those little, you know, the gem version, but basically Marine Pure balls. Yep. Um, I got a bunch of Chemipure Elite, which oh, nice. I think I went overboard on it. And <laughs> hasn't, I don't know, fingers crossed, you know, knock on wood. So far, it's been good. It was about four weeks ago that I added it. And... It's finally taking effect, like as in, in the past week, it's finally reduced nitrates. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it doesn't like strip everything entirely. That's my only concern. Um, yeah. Those are the big things. Okay. I don't know I, about the leap, but I know the blue does have some form of phosphate remover in it. Oh, wait, you know what? I think it's blue. Yeah. So, so blue is basically like a carbon and a phosphate media mixed together. Yeah. It's blue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, it works pretty well. I use that in a lot of my nanos in the past, and it seems to do an oxygen job keeping everything happy. I was the guy asking about the vibrant, too. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, that's good to know. So I shouldn't worry too much, but yep. I did overdo it. It's for like <laughs> five gallons, and this is only uh, 30 gallons. So yep. I overdid it. It happens. Okay, so I see you have the new fancy little Hannah salinity tester. Yes. How do you like that so far? It's been fantastic. Yeah. What I've been trying to figure out is what the most accurate mode to have it in is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because, you know, you think it has the same accuracy range no matter what. But it seems like if you're in the specific gravity, it's, you know, 1.025 versus 1.026. That's the yep. furthest it goes. It goes to the thousand, I guess mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, um, but if you're in parts per thousand... Like the 35 PPT? Yes, yeah. that seems to be more accurate, even though, you know, you'd think, oh, well, it's accurate no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're in the PPT, the difference between, you know, 34 and 44 is like 1.025 versus 1.0258. Yeah. So it's much more accurate. So I'm keeping it in the parts per thousand. Um, and it seems to work great, man. I've been loving it. Nice. That's awesome. I actually found the same thing with the Poseidon one that I have that it, it seems to be a little more accurate if it's on PPT. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny. People on, you know, Reef 3 were like, oh, it's going to be accurate no matter what. It's always the same. But no, PPT is like more granular. You can get a little more detail. Yeah. Higher resolution of readings, I guess. Good way to say it. Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. And what else? Uh... Oh, I got a lot of new frags. I just got a uh, petroglyph Zoa, which I've been wanting for a very long time. I have to Google this. What's it called? Oh, my God. The beautiful petro, like fuel, glyph, yep. G-L-Y-P-H. I could take a picture of it. It's gorgeous. Mine doesn't look super great because my lights could be upgraded. Well, but that's, that's cool looking. Oh, my God. They're so cool. Let's drag that up for a second. Huh. This is mine. Nice I focus, but got the utter chaos in the front in the foreground. Nice. I love it, man. It's my dream Zoa. So I got the single polyp. Nice. For too much money. Yeah, there's um I don't think of any photos here. There's a few fancy ones that I got coming, but I'm like, yeah, I can only afford one polyp. It's like fifty bucks a head. I'm like, eh, I'll take one. <laughs> deal. He was selling it for Oh, wait, that's a different butt muncher. <laughs> that's a different type of petroglyph. Oh, Mine, really? The photo didn't come up so great because I just lagged. Oh, that was totally different. Yeah, up, standard petroglyph, it's blue. It's like this gorgeous... Oh, okay, here blue. we go. Petroglyph, there you go. 30 this seconds later, but this I think yeah. that's the one you're talking about. It's blue with a smidge of goldy oh. to it. Mm, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, and... Oh, man, I've been wanting one for a while. This guy, actually, I'll plug him. Uh, on Instagram, he's Hooked Reefer, and mm -hmm. he really hooked me up. Oh, nice. No pun intended. <laughs> and, man, it's great. He was selling them for, like, 60 bucks, and he gave me that and a blue Blasto for about, what was it, like 80 bucks, including mm -hmm. shipping. So that was, like, you know, 20 bucks, basically, for a $60, $50 Zoa. So happy nice. about that. That's awesome. Yeah. There's um I'm super stoked. I should actually be getting this soon. But uh just before Christmas, I won a frag pack off one of the Facebook groups. And it's like oh, a, okay. a mystery acro pack. So I should be getting that hopefully pretty quick here. So he's just waiting yeah, for it to heal. Yeah. So a bunch okay. of fa fancy acros. So I'm super stoked from a guy in his business called Candy Corals. Everything he has is amazing. So I'm really stoked. Anyways, I got a, a single head of Aussie Gold Torch because that's been on my wish list for ages. And then just a couple of random Zoas, but I'm really excited to see what shows up because hopefully that will be in the next week or two now. I just got some interesting uh, acros myself, and they're an experiment because it's a new tank. But I got a Bonsai, which is another one of my dream corals. Nice. And something that Aqua SD called a birthday cake acro. Hmm. Take a quick picture of both. Again, because of the delay, I don't know if this is going to show up well, but... Nice. Eh, something like that. Yeah, hopefully that shows up. Is it on the left or the right? One looks like a... Yeah, uh... cake is on this side. Okay. Your left. Yeah. The bonsai is on the right. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was a bonsai. I'm, qu I'm like, Googling yeah. them as you're saying them just so I can see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bonsai was one of my dream corals, so hopefully... Nice. Well, it seems to be encrusting over the plug more than it had, so, so far, SPS experiment successful 
Nice. That's awesome. So far, so good. Yeah. So six months old. The Acros, you got tons of nice those in there. They're all happy. Dude, I'm. it's more than I expected. Yeah. At six months, I didn't think I'd be able to do this much. No, that's wicked. Hey, th but at the end of the day, biggest thing is making sure your tank's stable and happy, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'm mm -hmm. constantly dosing uh, calcium and alkalinity. Eventually, I'd like to get a dosing pump. That'd be nice. Yep. Are you doing uh, it manually right now? Yeah. How often do you manually dose? Refusion parts one and two. Ah. So far, so good. Are you doing it daily or every couple days? How often do you dose? Every couple days, only because I do about a 15% water change once a week. Okay. So it's not super necessary. Like the, I've noticed the alkalinity consumption has gone up. Mm -hmm. So it used to drop by, you know, 0.25 in a three day period, but now it's dropping by like 0.5 every day or two. Yeah. So I've to up my dosing, but it's still not extreme. I think it's just all the corals have started to kind of kick into gear. And corals will take a little bit until they settle and they really start to grow too at times. So it does take a little while for sometimes for it to kick in. Like I've had some corals will do nothing for months and one day they're like, and they just explode. And yeah. Start I mean, drinking the, the elk. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that's what's going on because the bonsai has been there for, I don't know, uh, six, six weeks or so. Yep. And all of a sudden over the past two weeks, it's grown a solid quarter inch, mm -hmm. oh, not even two weeks. So, where it was staying still before, all of a sudden it's starting to encrust over the plug. So you're definitely yeah. with that. Yeah, and it's just weird how it's random. Like, at least, I don't see the rhyme or reason. Like, one beside it will be thriving, the next one just do 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 nothing. Then one day, maybe it just adapts your parameters or whatever, it decides it's happy and it's time to grow. Seems to be. Yep. If you want to kick me off, by the way, feel free. <laughs> nah, hang out. It's all good. Cool. Okay. This is completely free for all today. <laughs> I caught it. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched the title garden streams, but he's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, he's been great. He's super uh, responsive and just seems like a good business owner. So, mm -hmm. I yeah. Bought from yet, but I need to. I'd love to go check out his shop one day. His new his new place looks really cool. I watched yeah. all his build videos of it. Are you anywhere near him? No. He's on the border. <laughs> right? No. Well, yeah, one day I'll make it down there. Speaking of that, uh, where else are you located? Oh, I'm in New York City. New York? Okay, nice. Side, yeah. So are you going to any of the reefing shows, since I know there's a few in your neck of the woods? Reefing Palooza? Yeah. I haven't thinking yet, but I really want to go. So. Have you been to one? Yes. No, I... Oh, you should. In six months, I've been a freshwater keeper for six... Oh, here comes the puff. I've been <laughs> a freshwater keeper for seven or eight years, but mm -hmm. saltwater only about six months, so... Okay. All brand new to me, but the community's been amazing, man. It is awesome. It's been awesome. It's so much so that I feel guilty if I like don't do a live stream. So you know, I'm sick. I'm like, ah, let's just throw up something today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I just so I just got a cleaner shrimp. Here's another kind of interesting mm -hmm. thing. Um, Peco again, but um, I got a cleaner shrimp about three weeks ago that I acclimated over the course of two or so hours yep. and within minutes of putting it in the tank it just kind of uh, froze up like it it got really stiff mm -hmm. and didn't make it next morning it was gone oh really so i think the reason was salinity shock even though i did it over two hours two hours should be you would think would be okay you would think yeah but it was it, so it started at 1.019 mm -hmm. thanks to the hannah checker and it ended up at about 1.025 which is what my tank is at. And I think it just, even though it was over two hours, it was still too fast for it. Because then the next day, Petco was really cool. They know I'm in there way too often <laughs> to give me a replacement. And they um, basically, I just, instead of doing it over two hours, I did it over almost four hours. Mm -hmm. It's happy. Everything mm -hmm. seems so apparently, cleaner shrimp, just as a little tip for everybody, they're yeah. really susceptible to salinity changes, even if it's over the course of a couple hours. So yeah, careful about getting cleaners. I don't think I've ever spent more than an hour, so you spent much longer than I have. Um, oh, one, one thing they can be sensitive to is high magnesium. Like if your magnesium or something was super high, that might affect it. I know some inverts aren't a fan of that. That could be it. I yeah. use uh, reef crystals, and it seems to have very high magnesium. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe I just got luckier with the second one. Maybe. Or, I mean, he could have been weak or some other issues. That's the other thing. You never know 100%. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Uh, Retro Reef is asking, any pro tips for a tank swap? Going from a 75 to 180 in the living room using a 180, 150-gallon rubber made for a fish and coral for temporary flow. That definitely makes it easy. Doing a tank swap in the same spot is always a bit of a challenge. With mine, I drained the tank down probably 80%. Then got a buddy, and we literally manhandled and slid the tank over. Then we got the new one in. Then it gave me a little bit of buffer to put everything into the new one. But if you have a 150-gallon Rubbermaid, I'd just get it, you know, on the other side of the room and just pump all your stuff and literally get everything in there. Then you're not in a rush. And if your corals, even if you don't have light on, your corals will be okay for a day or two as you get everything set up in the new one. Oh, I see a bunch of people commenting they are in NYC as well. Yep. Got a few out there. Side. So I'm on... Uh, I'm in the 90s on 2nd Ave, for those yeah. who are at. All right. Reefing with those somewhere out there. Jump on. So it'll come on in five minutes after he finishes cooking. Yep. You guys might be neighbors. Although New York's pretty big. <laughs> it's smaller than you'd think, man. One day I'll have to make it out there. You should. What yeah. part of Canada are you in? Uh, British Columbia. Okay. West Coast. Cool. I've been uh, to Canada a whole bunch of times, but mostly yep. on Ontario. I went oh, to yeah. school in Buffalo, so I was nice. right order went over all the time nice a little over a month from now being toronto niagara falls for the niagara crow show so that should be good oh nice and then i'm debating it's going to reef of palooza in orlando maybe <laughs> that was a lot of fun last year so i might do that one again we'll see and then there's another one i'm going to keep on reefing in may and that's in rhode island cincinnati area i think it's cincinnati wherever rhode island is so Parkins Aquatics, I totally agree. You should not have shrimp at 1.019. That's what Petco keeps their tanks at. Really, eh? Yeah, that's what it's at. Ah, uh, maybe that's just really? too much of a shock from it. What do you keep yours at? 35? 1.026? Uh, yeah, well, yep. 1.026, so 35. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wonder why they do that. Is it just to like prevent certain things or just being chintzy on the salt? I don't know. Yeah, I think they're pinching pennies on the salt. But also, I think it's, uh, well, I've heard at least that it helps, uh, hypocylindrally helps avoid disease. Yeah, that's probably the real reason. Yeah, I imagine that's part of it. Big yep. part of it. Yep. Okay, St. Nova. Quick question, guys. What frozen food ingredients gets the best feeding response? I feed shrimp, vs. clam, vs. whatever. Make my own food, and I want to make a more natural pullet booster. They say that any type of an amino mass acid generally does. I feed mice a shrimp, which is rich in fatty acids and stuff, and I find that works very well for bringing out polyps, so any fatty acids. So I'm going to guess, like, if you could add something like that into it, I mean, you could mix them in, but, um, like, a salmon oil or something might almost do it. Or just add a bit of aminos into your mix. But, yeah, any of that type of stuff, I find the polyps just come out right away. Dev, are you coming to Macna? I am coming to Macna. Yeah, that's in end of August, beginning of September, somewhere around then. That one's going to be at Disney World. And I had a almost instant wife when I just said Disney to wife. I was like, yes! So we're going to make a little trip out of it and do Mac and do Disney for a few days. I've never been to Disney as an adult. Is it as much fun? I went, we went to um, Disneyland last year for a couple days because we found like super duper cheap flights. And it was pretty fun. Roller coasters and stuff are always good. So, excuse if you want to go to Macna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yep, I know. You'll be hook, line, and sinker in no time. I'm going to turn my power heads back on, but my tail, splot, uh, tail spot bloody loves hiding in the power heads. So I always oh, that's sketchy. Out. Yep, it worries <laughs> the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and he's not in there, so. Mm -hmm. There we go. It scares <laughs> me, man. I'm always worried because I have him on a schedule, too, so. Mm hmm every you know with the smart plugs every three hours i have them set to turn back on yep because you know let's say i forget to turn them back on so that worries the hell out of me mm -hmm. i might want to change that because he just loves hiding in there yep uh rip van hey dev have you heard about people dosing whey protein it's like the powder they sell for making protein like, yeah i know what it is i don't know about that one i did hear that the other day actually i think i heard it on one of the brs streams um I don't know if I would test that as 
I, I don't know. I don't know what the benefit would be, to be honest. Like, I don't know if I'd trust that one. Star Wars Land? Star Wars Land would be cool. My wife is a big Harry Potter geek, so she was all over Harry Potter Land at Universal. Went to that oh, one. So is mine. Yep. <laughs> It was pretty crazy, some of the rides, though. There's, like, you're on a roller coaster with, like, 3D glasses. And it's, like, 3D screens and stuff blowing at you. They're mixing, like, five different types of, like, effects all together. It was kind of intense. It's cool, though. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I've heard of people dosing... Yeah, I've heard of people dosing milk before, like, vitamin C, all these different things that tank. It's honestly... It's hard to know, unless you're doing it long-term, if there's a big benefit or what's happening with it. Although, so one test I am doing right now... I sent off a uh, ICP test the other day. First one I've ever done in my life on my tank. Since I did the upgrade, I purposely haven't let myself dose absolutely nothing. All I've done is feed the tank and let the calcium reactor do its thing. Because I want to find out what the calcium reactor is or isn't giving my tank. So I've been doing that. And I was also thinking I might add some Miracle Mud and then wait like a month and then do another ICP test and see what the Miracle Mud's giving to the tank. Because lots of people swear by it, but I know there's no real like anecdote this all anecdotal like there's no real straight up evidence so if my tank is lacking something i'm really curious to see if that's gonna fulfill that void or not so that'll be interesting so i'll tell you my idea if you don't borrow it i was gonna take our water yes and soak the miracle mud in our water and then yes. set that out for an icp test we'll do it and, and then we can compare notes so okay so this is my plan so i sent an icp test last week now if i add the mud to my tank like within the next week or two and then i can um i like your test you should do that oh <laughs> and then after the miracle mud's been in my tank for a month once i see the first icp test if something is lacking from it then i then the second test is going to say is it actually providing that the only one slight flaw to my plan is that there are different brands of icp testing so hopefully they all balance out but working with what i got as long as you do the same one you should be all right like, one's the Triton brand and one's the Coral View brand. But they test, like, 90% of the same stuff. So I think it will be okay. I think, that... I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use the Triton brand only because I have a history and account mm. of, like, you know, using the Triton test. And I think it, you know, it, it's, I think it's more expensive unless I find, like, one of the other ones that's significantly cheaper. Because the Triton one is, like, what is it, like, 49 bucks? Yeah. But... I tend to buy, you know, during like when BRS has the holiday season, you can get a three pack cheap or I usually buy my tests for the year at that time. Mm -hmm. get them like really cheap. Yep. Like you get them like 30 bucks for one. Yeah, that's not bad. I got the other one free at Mac now, so that's my excuse. I already have it. <laughs> they gave me one to try. So I was like, all right. So it's there. How about the Trident? The Trident. Up on this Trident? You excited? I don't know. Well, we'll see. It's still early. Waiting to see how well everyone else's results are. <laughs> True. It is. Although I imagine with all the delays, they must be making it quite a good product, you would hope. Yeah, well, I think the thing is, is because I know a lot of people are going to be able to dose from it. So they want to make sure it's all good and there's no going to be big liabilities of nuke in a tank. So I think that's a big reason of why it's been delayed a bazillion times is just to make sure it's, you know, dummy proof to an extent. Yeah. You know, you know what, Devin? Like, I yep. think, you know, privately, you and I, I think I've gone back and forth with you on the dose, on mm -hmm. the on the trident. And you know what? I was just going back through the last couple of years. And a lot of the, you know me, I changed my tank too much. Like, too much. Um, but a lot of the changes I've made, like, stuff I've tried has always been to, you know, like, um, have a higher pH. So, mm -hmm. Adam, I live in New York, too, and, you know, wife and two kids, we live in an apartment, so I run my skimmer line outside, but if I don't run a skimmer or do, like, anything to boost my pH, my pH can go to, like, 7.65, 7 mm -hmm. 7.7 at night. Yep. So, I was thinking with the Trident, right now I'm running two auto top-offs. Mm -hmm. One goes through, like, a Kalkwasser, like, reactor type thing. So, basically, if I have the Trident... I'm thinking my first use case would be, hey, if your pH is low, you know, like, yeah, turn off the calcium reactor. Well, if I, I think I'm going to be using a calcium reactor by then, but use cold water, 
and if the if the alkalinity goes you know a tad too high mm -hmm. you know, just use the regular ato just use fresh water okay. and sort of try to find that balance between kalkwasser fresh water and you know try to find the right ph while still keeping it stable okay so you oh i'm sorry go ahead yeah, so Kalkwasser, I find, I don't know, personally, I just find it to be extra work, even though it's like not, it's like two seconds. But so on my tank right now, I have my dinky little RODI line running outside to my skimmer coming in and a refugium. And my pH has been awesome with the Kelsey Reactor. In my old tank, I like struggled to get it above eight. In this one, it's always above eight. Like it's 8.16 to 8.27 type of thing. So that's with a decent refugium light and then my little tiny airline outside. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. I really don't. I still get, um, I still get like if I don't run the Kalkwasser, I still, get, you know, seven point seven at night. Yeah, seven point. If I skimmer does a run at night, man, I get my my Kalkwasser. I think I have a screenshot here somewhere. So let me see the screenshot. Okay. Like so if I don't run my skimmer at all, um, my pH can go to like i think i've seen it at like 7.6 sometime so i'm nervous to run calc wasser i actually have yeah. some and i'm just concerned because i don't have a doser do you think mm -hmm. it's risky to have just a, a drip line going in i mean that's lots I mean, of people lots of people actually do that but quick shout out to kyle murphy thank you so much for the five dollar super shot much appreciated hey, hey. <laughs> thank you kyle um, as for dripping calc wasser, you can 100% do that. I've seen lots of people mix like a gallon jug and they just mm -hmm. put it above their tank with a little airline and just let it slowly drip. So I have seen people do that, but then you just got to be mixing a jug every day. <laughs> so it's just work for you. You need a doser. You will appreciate it once it actually comes. It's only a 30 gallon. I mean, I can't imagine I'm going to be dripping that much. It's yeah. Be a very slow drip. I would just do like two slash three part with a doser and life will be good and you will appreciate it. Even yeah. if you don't want to spend a lot of money, like j Doser for the 80 to 100 bucks, I mean, they're a bit of a pain to program, but they're solid <laughs> otherwise. Okay. Hey, Devin, so yep. if you look at my screen, remember that photo I, I think I shared where the snails were in my skimmer? Yep. <laughs> so look, at, look, at, look at the photo I'm sharing. That's mm -hmm. when I'm either not running my skimmer or the snails were in my skimmer. Big so you drop. look how far the pH dropped. Yeah, it's a big drop. Yeah. You don't have an outside airline, do you? I do. It you actually do? runs outside, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're skimmer pulling it in. And what are you using for your refugium right now? Are you using the H380? H380. Huh, I'm surprised H380. you don't have more with that. I'm surprised. You know what? You're making me think now. Babe. When's like, the last yeah. time you calibrated your probe? A couple weeks ago. Okay, fair. There goes that. Hmm. Hmm. That is confusing. Mine, you know, I have um, a very closed off living room. I'm in New York City and mm -hmm. my pH doesn't drop below like 8.0, 7.9. So that is strange. I wish I had an answer for you. I got nothing. Who <laughs> has lots of kids. Everyone's breathing on his tank all day. Oh, you know what? <laughs> This the actual skimmer you use, Devin, mm -hmm. actually makes a big difference because when I was using a Vertex Omega 180i, which that thing pulls 1600 liters of air per hour, I had no pH issues. Hmm. Um, what are you using now? Um, I'm using a Bubble King Mini 160, which pulls like half. Mm -hmm. And before, when I was using a Tunzi um, skimmer, it was pulling like even less air. Mm -hmm. um, the Tunzi skimmer skimmed really well. It's just that it just didn't pull a lot of air. Um, so I, I not not only is it running the airline outside the skimmer you use, mm -hmm. though the Nios and the there is a article on I think Reefs.com where a guy like basically used like an air valve and test the air draw. Yeah, of like some of these skimmers. And I think he said the Vertex and the Nio skimmers were the only skimmers that pulled like 80 or 90% of the air that they were like quoted or rated, rated for. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. hmm. That's interesting. I yeah. wonder if mine actually pulls. Interesting, interesting. But yeah, I mean, how much fresh air you're pulling in probably makes a really big difference. Yep. Mm. 
So I'll probably do a future video on the details of this, but I found it really interesting because I'm testing out that new refugium light right now. And at first I had the uh, turf scrubber on the tank with like a par 38 style refugium light. And it was keeping my pH fail elevated. So I, I changed it in the first day, nothing. And the day after that, I saw a big boost in pH from just the new refugium light. And then I'm like, okay, it's probably test this. I'm going to pull the turf scrubber off for a month. So I took the turf scrubber off and I watched my pH drop. And then over the next week, my pH has climbed higher than it was before, which I thought was kind of crazy. Just because it's like the mass of Chato's like quadrupled in size in like the last like 10 to 14 days. But yeah, it's interesting just staring at the little graphs and seeing how things change. Um, what bef Oh, you were using a turf scrubber. In the past when you've used a refugium, mm -hmm. what refugium light ha did you use? I have used many. <laughs> um, my original hardcore one was the Evergrow Nova 2, which is a 90 watt grow light. More recently, I was using a PAR38 bulb, and then right now I'm testing out the new AI refugium light. I'm actually using the Kato Max, and so far, so good. Yeah? It's been awesome. Yeah, it was a little pricey for what it is, but mm -hmm. it's so convenient. It's, it's exactly what I would have needed. It's like the perfect fit for right over my tank. It's nice. It's been growing things well. I mean, I think you can get something cheaper on eBay, but <laughs> if you're yep. looking for convenient, the mm -hmm. Kato Max. That's the innovative marine one. Is it innovative? Uh, let's see. Kato yeah. Max. Or... Yeah, it is. I just googled it. Yeah. Oh, cool. it is. I... Yep. Oh, speaking of that, I one of my all-in-one tanks. I had um, I bought these little strips of cob LEDs, and I cut the back off a section of it. And I put them on the back of the glass. Like I've done all kinds of random stuff, and I've made my own. I've done many over the years. It works. I can tell you, I've done all of the that. Yep. Uh, you made like a little refugium. Mm -hmm. It works. I, my nano that I have now, um, I'm actually struggling with low nutrients. Mm -hmm. That absolutely works. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, all the nanos I've had, the, when I had the Nuvo, when I had the 12 gallon, and now when I have the 14, the little the circular tank, I cut the strip off. Um, I think Dave Nano Tanks um, gave me some lights. Mm -hmm. and it absolutely works. I have zero nitrates, zero phosphates. Nice. That's, well, zero could be bad, though. <laughs> but yeah, it pulls it out pretty good, eh? What's going on, Producer Reef? Battery died in my pH monitor months ago. I've got to change out and calibrate it <laughs> out of curiosity. Yep. Um, also have Refugium and Triton. I don't know. I haven't tried Triton yet. A lot of people seem to be on the Triton bang on wagon. I'm really curious to see if there's anything lacking for my calcium reactor and if there is then maybe i'll look at supplementing with some other stuff but interesting to see i <laughs> see your updates daily on facebook <laughs> mm -hmm. uh water is always being renewed we are all sensible Oh, did we lose um, the other guy? I wanted to ask him where in New York was he. Mm. He actually did say what, what road or area he was earlier. Whereabouts in New York are you, I am in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Good old Brooklyn, eh? Yeah, good old Brooklyn. Um, Reefkeeper was asking me earlier, why did I change skimmers? I don't know, Reefkeeper. I want to try them all. I see new stuff. I have a chance to get new stuff. <laughs> So, reefing with O is worse than me for changing equipment and stuff. <laughs> I feel you know, like I, I feel like I keep myself for a long time when I look at you. <laughs> you know what? I think I'll cycle through everything now. I think I'm back. You're back. Welcome back. Hey! Oh, cool. I thought I got booted. No. Uh, <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that though. No, you're, you're good. Canadian. I'm pretty nice. Uh, <laughs> you got to be causing a lot of a lot of heck for me to kick somebody. <laughs> <laughs> So I was uh, asking, where were you in New York? Where about? I am on the Upper East Side, so I am uh, ninety. I I can give specifics, I guess, but I'm between ninetieth and a hundredth on Second Ave. All right, I know what that is. I'm in Brooklyn. What part? Crown Heights ish. Cool. Okay. Uh, um, you know, um, 
so you get off um at the last stop on the four train and then you take a bus for like a few blocks crown heights the last stop on the four train is crown heights utica sure so i live in that area yeah okay so you should have pretty good air out there i'm surprised you have 7.7 7 or 7.6 whatever you're saying you know what I, I am actually you guys have me thinking now maybe my probe needs replacing or something how, how old is it it's been two years old but i just yeah. I, i'm I did, it's not the thought is now creeping in then maybe my probe well maybe it, I can double check my probe it's generally not that it'll necessarily die it's usually this don't hold their calibration as well i calibrated it like you know a few weeks ago yeah Thing. Kyle was just asking. I have a 44 gallon mixed reef. My protein skimmer is rated for 75 gallon. Should I keep it running 100% of the time? I like to run mine 24 hours a day just because there's a lot of benefit for the aeration. If, I mean, but there is a ton of people that'll run a skimmer six hours or 12 hours and put it on a timer. So if you have lower pH, I think it's better to run it all the time or if you have a very high fish load. But if your tank's stocked pretty light, we could absolutely just run it part time. Or if it's noisy, you know, let it run when you go to bed and leave it off during the day. That way you're getting that extra aeration at nighttime. You know what? That's something that's worth bringing up, actually. Well, speaking of, like, having things on schedules like a skimmer, mm -hmm. I'm debating having my, uh... Um, oh, yeah, that's video of me. <laughs> I'm just seeing the lag. My filters yeah. were kicking on, and mm -hmm. I have to prime them. Um, I have a UV sterilizer mm -hmm. that is bumping the temperature up to as high as 86. Ooh, that's toasty. Yeah, and it's, you know, without it, it hovers around 80. But with it, it seems to bump all the way up to, yeah, 86. And I, I just don't understand. This thing's pumping a lot of heat. How many watts is it? Yeah. Uh, I want to say it's 90 watts. That feels, that feels overkill for your 30-gallon tank. <laughs> Let me double check. Let me double check. Okay. Because... Got it on Amazon, so I can find out for sure. Oh no, 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 not even close. I'm thinking of my heater. Okay. It's a nine watt. UV okay. Sterilizer. That that sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> ninety watt would be would be massive for an, a yeah, smaller like tank. Aquarium, you know, museum level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, any thoughts? I just don't know what to do. Is there? And if you turn that off, your heat doesn't crank up as high. No, it's been off for about two days, and I'm. Hovering between 78 and 80. Yeah, see, that's a much better place to be. Yeah. I don't know, unless there's something I funky with it. it. Like, you'll definitely give us some heat from the ball, but that does seem like a lot to me. I've yeah. never actually used a UV sterilizer, personally, though. It really helped with what looked like dinoflagellates. Mm -hmm. Actually, it got rid of them, because I had it off because of the temperature issue. Yep. And then I started developing what looked like dinoflagellates. Mm -hmm. And within three days of having it on, gone yeah. no more darkness. everything seemed mm -hmm. better but the temperature just skyrocketed so oh, that's crazy ball must put on a lot of heat i know and i don't know what to do about it. <laughs> uh harkins aquatic says need a fan that's a huge uv nine is fine but yeah i mean if you do have a fan blowing mm -hmm. across your tank that will make it evaporate a lot more which will in turn right. cool it and i unfortunately don't have an auto top off so that's mm. not ideal ah yes 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 it's so weird. I guess mm. I'll just use it as needed because it seems to help a lot with things like dinos. And, you know, if there's some sort of sickness going on, I guess I can just use it as needed for like eight hours at a time. Yeah. Even Rip Fan in the comments said run it for 1.5 hours at a time. But yeah, could be just run it for an hour a day. Yeah. Instead of letting it run 24 7. Get more smart plugs. Yep. Exactly. It's a good excuse. There you go. <laughs> yep. They were cheap too. That's why people are nervous because I got four for like. Thirty dollars. That's so. not bad at all. Not at all, but it makes people nervous. People are like, "Oh, wait, hang on, you got to pay a lot of money for quality, right?" So if you're not paying a lot, it must be garbage. So it makes people nervous. Hey, as long as I don't know, just read all the reviews. The, the solid reviews, yeah. and why not give it a whirl? But, I mean, parts of the menus are in Chinese, but you know, <laughs> overall it works well. Once you figure it out for one plug, it's the same for the rest of the the other three. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, someone else is saying, shut off your heater when you run the UV. But, yeah, very well, could just balance out. <laughs> so, I love these smart plugs. I love the app. 
but right now it's telling me that there is a sandstorm going on in my in the weather portion oh. of the snow gap. <laughs> snowy and windy i don't know in why the sandstorm sandstorm. <laughs> sandstorm where were these plugs made <laughs> they're good i promise yeah I got from amazon they're a company called tekken tekken i think i think i actually might even know which ones those are they're really good i i've been loving them and they have nothing but good reviews i don't know why it says there's a sandstorm going on. that's funny it's so random it's so random are they circle or the oval ones uh, they are rectangles. They are perfect because they don't take up more than yeah. one plug. They're great. There is little circle ones. I bought my parents a bunch for Christmas to like automate all their lights and stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's that same problem. Sounds familiar. Very weird. I promise, guys, they're reliable. <laughs> yeah. them three months or so, no issues whatsoever. So far, so good. Yeah. Can't say, you know, I don't want to give a guarantee, but. Yeah. Worst case scenario, they seem to fail on. So, you know, worst yeah. case, something doesn't turn, turn off. off. That's fair. But if you're using it through Alexa, you're probably there most of the time when you're doing it. So it's just save switches exactly. and stuff. And I can check the status when I'm away. You know, mm-hmm. that's what instigated me wanting to get these, actually. Is I was out to dinner with my wife, and I was like, oh, I forgot to turn the filters back on. And that night I ordered boop, boop. Done. Fixed. Yeah, that was it. What else is going on in my tank? I don't know if is uh reefing with O still here? We lost him. Oh no. See if he comes back or not. He was on mute, yeah. so it's probably his kids running around or something. Hangouts seems to be having some issues. Yeah, it does that sometimes. It'll just like it'll work for a while and kinda crap out and you can rejoin it and but yeah. bit of a pain. I did just get a for Christmas, I got a pod hotel, if you guys have ever heard of that. I have one of my son. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I don't have a stone, so I just have it in the display. Yeah. From a uh, Mandarin whose name is Cher. Nice. My wife named him. Very nice, very nice. Do yeah. you have, has Have you spotted any pods in it? Not in it, per se. Yep. I know there are pods in the tank, but I haven't, like, noticed some coming out of it. Mm-hmm. I'm just assuming they're in there, to be frank. That's fair. I was laughing with my... I got one at a Macna and a buddy got one too. And he's like, I don't know. I don't see pods in mine. So I was sitting there looking. There was a flash. I took a picture. I'm like, aha, mine has pods in it. <laughs> uh, it's going to crack me oh, up. Oh, yeah. You know what? This is actually something interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't want to bash Polyp Lab because I love Polyp Lab. Mm-hmm. Reapers are great. Mm-hmm. This is the Polyp Lab scope. Yes. Except it's not. <laughs> <laughs> is it just a UV flashlight? I got it for eight dollars on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, is it just a is it a UV flashlight? Right, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's totally just a UV flashlight. Mm-hmm. It's the exact same product. Yeah. I I don't know what to say. I like Polyp Lab, but dude, it's the exact same light. <laughs> How much do they sell them for? Uh, you know what? I don't think they're for sale yet. Okay. It's gonna be like thirty five bucks or yeah. something. You know, I checked. They're not out for sale yet. But okay. this is identical. I mean, the, every little bit of the design is the same. The way the light looks when you blast it and focus it to the <laughs> yep. core, you know, it's got the same kind of pattern. Mm-hmm. It's the same light. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to feel about that. It's just one of those reefing things, man. You name it a, a reef tank product and it's more valuable. Very, yeah, very true. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Not sure how to feel about that. <laughs> yep, I know. I like Polyp Lab, though. I think they make yeah. really good products overall. Um, Polyp Lab lens. That thing is awesome. Yes. Although, yes. You know what? I have the, um, what do they call it? Uh, that looks the like one. the Aqua Clip. That, yes. I don't, like, I don't like that one as much, personally. Um, it's good. It's way too orange. Yes. Um, the only problem is I keep losing it. I just found the lens cap. I literally lose this thing like every day, but I use it for like Instagram photos all the time. It's super handy. It's it's a nice feeling product. It seems like a good product, but when I take pictures, it's just washed out with orange. Yeah, it, I, have one of the, I bought one of those. It was like 30 bucks. I've never used it since. I'm like, ah, this is garbage. Yeah. So. Uh, you know what? Props to Algae Barn though. Yeah. Greg, the customer service rep there. Mm-hmm. He credited me in algae barn credit which oh nice you know I use, yeah for the full value of the aquarium clip oh sweet so, yeah oh, i'm super pleased bonus like, that's cool 
I bought mine yeah. at a show, so I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even get, couldn't take it back. But yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so sure. honestly, the Paul Plab one though, that is my favorite yeah. cell phone clip that I've tried so far. It has the best colors, the That's most right. natural looking. Yeah. Oh, good night, Tank. That's it. Yeah. So a couple people are saying the bulb in the 400 nanometers in the Paul Plab one, not 360 of the UV. Oh. It's, so yeah it very well might be a different spectrum i mean it could be the same yeah, house thing with a slightly yeah. different thing it might be the same design it might be the same form yep. factor mm -hmm. with a different it. that's certainly possible yep uh only use the orange filter when it's all blue in my tank any of the whites are super orange actually what did i buy today where's my camera i don't have it i literally wanted a yellow filter for my camera so i bought this like newer set of like all these random lenses for like 27 dollars, and the yellow one's the only one i'll ever use but it actually works pretty darn well. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, just for no, a big camera, I wanted something to cut out the blues a bit more. Yeah. And I don't know, man. Your, your fellow reefer, even with the blues and nothing but the blues, this Aquara clip just, it gives this weird orange hue to the rock. Yeah, it's it's too orange. It needs to be more of a subtle yeah. orange, and it would have been good. Yeah, but I can try to take a picture and demonstrate. I probably have the box of mine still too somewhere. But yeah, and any photo I've ever taken is just way too orange. Like maybe if it was only only blues on, it would work. But maybe I'll try that later. I don't think I've tried it in hundred percent blues. But but yeah, all the ones I find, they're always way too overpowering. It's hard to find just a nice subtle yeah. one that gives you nice colors. I mean, here's see the problem is the lag. I don't know if I can show the um, you know with the right angle i guess i'll hold it for 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but oh, i'll just move angles I know. Basically, yeah you can just see and maybe you can tell me live can you kind of make out the orange there because it's just it's yeah. too orange. Mm -hmm. the rock orange i mean it yeah. doesn't doesn't look good yep i know it does it looks too unnatural to me yeah um cheaper options are gels yeah like if you're in a photography you can literally buy um on a live stream way back in the day i think i showed it but it's like literally like a sample gel set of like a hundred different gels you just hold up whatever one you want and it was like a, just a little sample book i think worked awesome for that that's what i used to use way back when uh the light gels for photography um how about phosphate any numbers you chase or you guys exporter um anything less than like point like point oh three to 0 0.09 is kind of where I think is a good range. I, I don't worry about super low, like somewhere in that range, it's corals, you have nice colors, everything's to be happy. So if it's above one, then I'll be like, ah, okay, I should get down a little bit. But that's kind of my range. I know for the longest time, everyone said 0 0.03, but I, I almost find you get a little bit better colors when you have a little bit higher, like your colors and your corals are some more deeper and richer. uh on the scope box that nm it does not say oh the nanometers okay yeah i don't know i do have a hardcore uv flashlight somewhere if i can find it but it was like a three watt one or something it was super bright but i've not seen that one in a while all right so yeah he was just checking the box see what it said uh please help with the jet activated carbon question does it strip potassium Montes are pale new salt water. I have 10 ppm nitrates and 0 to 0 02 phosphates. Um, I don't think so. Carbon can strip a lot of stuff out of the water. I honestly have no idea if it would strip potassium, though. I wouldn't think so, but it very well could. Anything you're dosing to your tank, it could potentially strip out. So if you are dosing potassium or other stuff because you think you're lacking it, it might be a not bad idea to like leave your carbon or your reactors off for an hour or two as you're doing that. Now, but on the flip side, it may only take out a very small amount because it's being distributed through the water. But yeah, carbon does suck out tons of random stuff. Oh man, you know what? Now that it's a bummer that uh, reefing with O is gone because I have a question about New York City water. I'm, <laughs> making, uh, I'm making some RO water as we speak. Mm -hmm. And I just bought a pre-filter for sediment. Yep. It seems like that's specifically an issue, and this isn't like a normal sediment pre-filter. This is a pre pre-filter. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be only required in New York, 
And I'm wondering if he's had the same issue because I had some uh, normal filters, you know, the mm. sediment, the carbon, then the RO, then the DI, and they lost pressure super quickly. Oh, really? So, it got plugged up yeah. really fast. You got lots of sediment or stuff in your water. Exactly. And I recently, you know, in doing some research, found that the sediment levels in New York City specifically are higher. So I got a sediment pre-filter that I can wash and like hopefully should last forever. But I'm wondering if he's had the same issue or if it's like a fluke. So bummer. If anybody in chat knows, oh, he, you know, he's New back. York. Oh. Hey. There you yeah, speak, the, speak of the devil. Hey. <laughs> you had a question about New York City water? Yep. I sure did. Good timing, man. Um, have you had any issues with sediment blocking up your filters? I recently had a huge water pressure drop, and I got a sediment pre-filter, like before the sediment filter and the carbon filter, and that seems to have helped. Have you had a similar issue? Yes. So our – yes. Short answer, yes. Long answer, New York City, we have great water. Yeah. Our, your RODI system is going to last a long time in New York water. The problem is the sediment. And I have to change my sediment filter like very often, three, four months. Sometimes, depending on if it's the summer, if there's a water main break, like it. sometimes two months I have to change it. Because cause right now I think I'm going three months and that thing looks black. Wow. Dang. It's time to change it. So the thing is we have old pipes. They're mm -hmm. also building like a bypass. New York City water is very good. Like our filters work very, very well. Our carbon block lasts a long time. We don't yeah. use chloramines. We use chlorine. We use fluoride. Uh, our water is very good. Right. Uh, I think sometimes TDS coming out of my tap could be as low as like 16, 17 sometimes. Oh, wow. Really really low. Low. Not all the time, but it could be that low. But, oh. um, you know, my first reef tanks I used, I only used DI, and that still lasted a long time. Just a sediment filter and DI. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I am seeing the same thing you do where, like, my – if you're using something like the RO Buddy, that thing gets – Yes, I am. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, that – I used to use that, and that's the main reason I went to – when I had a smaller tank, when I had like a 37 gallon, I used the RO buddy and um and I went to a BRS filter BRS unit when I was using the RO buddy. Yeah. Because that, you know, maybe it's like eight bucks, but that thing gets clogged up. Sometimes when you disconnect it and you're like connecting a new one versus the old one, mm -hmm. you feel the weight difference. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so interestingly, Aquatic Life, who makes the RO buddy also sells specifically for new york city and any other areas with high sediment they sell a pre-filter so i bought that and you know i literally added it yesterday so we'll see how it works out mm -hmm. but ideally this will deal with that problem and it's washable so hopefully it's a permanent solution but it's a known issue like the amazon listings for the ro buddy specifically says new york city only Get the sediment pre-filter, and I ignored that. I <laughs> fall, but I got it. So hopefully it works out. So it's interesting to hear you've had the same problem. So maybe this is the solution. Yeah, um, I we because of the our water system is incredibly efficient. Like our water system, if you live on the third or fourth floor of any building in New York. You never have to use no pump. Like our our stuff is gravity fed, gravity fed all the way from upstate, and it has enough pressure to get to like the third floor of third and fourth floor of most apartment buildings. Yeah. When you see like iconic pictures of like New York City buildings with like the big water tank on the tower, that's mm -hmm. because they pump it up to the to the to the roof, and then it's gravity fed to like the top floor of apartment buildings. But we have low pressure. Like to get any kind of, um, I use a, I use a, um, a booster pump, mm -hmm. so I can, I can make water. I can fill a five gallon bucket in like 15, 20 minutes when you use a booster pump. Um, yeah. I don't know if that attachment that they have works. I've never used it, and when I was using the RO buddy, it wasn't something. But if you ever want to like 
use like maybe the BRS pre filters. Um, that because it's it's still only using RO tubing, you can always connect that and use it. Mm -hmm. What size tank do you have? Oh, it's just a little thirty. Okay, nothing crazy. All right, <laughs> one day. If let's eventually, eventually, you know, when BRS has the sale, pr consider like maybe getting, especially if it's in the eighty dollar range. See if the BRS unit, as long as you have room to store it, because it's it's considerably larger than the yeah. aquatic life. Yeah. My kitchen is literally, I mean, you might be familiar. I don't know. You might have more space than me, but being on the every side, my kitchen consists of a stove, a sink, and a fridge, all recessed into the wall. It is nothing more than that. <laughs> There's no <laughs> counter space. Everything is under the sink. So... Thankfully, the RO buddy fits under there, but that's the extent of it. Yeah, so I have to wait till I own a house. Yeah, the pre fill. Yeah, mine. I keep mine in a closet, and I have to break it down and put it up every time I need to make water. So yeah, yeah. you know what? That's a, you had you have me, and I that would actually be a cool series, Devin. Like yeah, refing, apartment reefing. Apartment reefing. We could yeah. could be good. It's a big thing here. It is. It's wow. probably true. Yeah. It's, I would have never thought of it. So there you go. <laughs> For what, an hour and a half, I just realized, uh, Reef Dudes, what is your real name? <laughs> My real name? Devin. Devin. Okay, yeah. Devin. I'm Adam. Nice to nice actually meet you. Nice to meet Adam. <laughs> I, I figure it out from just putting in the chat when seeing you come back in, like, ah, Adam. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Cool. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Glad to be here. Excellent, excellent. It's pretty wild. Yep. No, that's pretty good, considering I almost didn't do a stream today. It worked out well. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're feeling better, man. Yeah. Awoken and... woke says, reefing on the Upper East Side, that's dedication. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm all about it. I've been, you know, an aquarist, aquarist? I don't know. I've been in the hobby for eight years or so, but nice. finally getting into reef tanks. So, big change. It's a good change. You like it. Yeah. It's, it's, oh. it, it, it's hooksy it's addicting it's so addicting do you which fish store do you go to and sorry sorry to make sorry my phone's ringing no problem i think he's asking which fish stores do you go to up there uh so interestingly and surprisingly for most probably my go-to has been petco mm -hmm. simply for convenience sake mm -hmm. but the the store there were i've gotten most of my frags actually has been Pacific Aquarium. Uh, they've been great. They have a $25, $40, $65 uh, frag tanks, yep. I guess. Um, and they've been great. They've been really just accommodating. I've been able to sell things back to them, which Petco does not allow you to do. Um, and yeah, Pacific Aquarium has been fantastic. Nice. So I, I go to Manhattan. I like Manhattan. That's my go Manhattan Aquariums. Yeah, a go to store Pacific. I I like those guys. They sell one thing about those guys. Even I'm not a freshwater guy, but if you're a freshwater guy, they sell everything on the like you literally can go in that store. They sell um aquarium fish and like fishing reels. If you like are a fish, if you fish recreation, they sell everything. Like if you need a plant, fake plant, they'll have it. And they'll have it in the store. So it's yeah. like 80, 90% freshwater, 10% salt water. So kind of a bummer for me now, but they are a good store. Manhattan Aquariums, however, huge selection. Yeah. Definitely better. So salt water, so they have mostly salt water stuff. So. Yeah. Um, all right. And surprisingly, on the island of Manhattan, there's only two decent, like mm -hmm. other than Petco. Yeah. It's shocking. And I got to admit, though, you know, Petco, regardless of their reputation, they have a solid frag tank. I've gotten two Maxima clams from them. Nice. I mean, they've been, can't complain. They've been great. Which Petco is this? I went to <laughs> Pet Monday morning, wait, Monday morning, I went to the Union Square Petco and I was surprised they had a frag tank with a Radeon G4 over it. That's and Petco. They had a clam for fifty bucks, which 
if I if I didn't already have two clams, I probably would have sprung for it because I might have been there at the same time as you. Yeah. Um. They, yeah. Where do you see a clam for fifty? It's like a gold clam for yeah. fifty bucks. That was I saw the squamosa. It's probably still there. Squamosa. I actually, mm-hmm. I, I actually bought a a torch out of that frag tank. It was twenty bucks, but it, nice. it needed some nursing. Yeah. But if I can nurse it back to hell for twenty bucks. Like that is like such a steal yep. that I decided to try it. I got what seems to have been a 24k Leptoceris, which goes for like 60 bucks for 16 bucks. Nice. Yeah. So you, I'm you, happy. it's nice when there's no names because you can get gems. <laughs> yeah. They're okay. like anything on the sand bed was like 20 right. bucks. So I was like, hey, that torch <laughs> is on the sand bed. Can I get that? She was like, yeah, it's on the sand bed. So okay. Mm-hmm. Qu- question. Do your apartments let you guys have tanks, or do you just sneak a tank in? Unclear. <laughs> Un- unclear. Fair enough. They, the superintendent has been in. Yeah. And actually, funny enough, there's a guy. I live on the third floor, and mm-hmm. I have a 75, and I'm scared of going bigger. <laughs> yeah. My super has a tank in the basement. It's a 180. Oh. had that in their apartment, so go figure. It didn't, and, and the guy was on the fourth floor. So hey, it didn't go through the floor. Yeah, so I guess the floor can support a one eighty somewhere. Nice, that's awesome. There, I was laughing because one of the, sorry, who is it here? Reefaholic. He's like, oh yeah, I got a two twenty in my apartment. I'm like, how'd you sneak that in? <laughs> hey, hey, Devin. Yep. You know. like, the, there are some. Pl- I don't know why I'm whispering because everyone's hearing <laughs> it. Yeah, but there's a guy I go to in mm-hmm. Chinatown. Yeah. Um, and you know, New York City Chinatown is where you can get stuff. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but there's a guy, David, that he lives in a tiny apartment. Like, the apartment is like maybe the size. It's like a his living room is maybe eight by eight. Mm-hmm. And this guy has so many tanks in his living room. Like, I think he has three one twenties on a rack wow. all over each other, and he has like a elaborate system of like pumps. And he has some nice frags, some really nice frags. But it's interesting, like Devin, like you mm-hmm. and I couldn't walk side by side. Really, in the hallway. like one person has to be in the living room purchasing at the time. <laughs> and then when you're finished purchasing, like oh, you man. leave, and then the next person. Comes in. But the guy has good frag, and he has some high end stuff too. Yeah, it's awesome. But um, New York is amazing. I found like two or three people like that. That's awesome. And, the guy, I don't know where he gets coral because he's like, but if you 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 do by appointment where you, you know he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go pick up some frags for my supplier today, and then mm-hmm. he's like, I'll be back at two. And he's like, I have another customer coming at two thirty, so you can come at about you know three o'clock because he might take. It's he amazing. Bases out. It's like a full time gig, half an hour's yeah. time slots. All right, get out of here. Next person's coming. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's awesome. It's okay, so get this. When I was at one of my LFSs a couple weeks ago, I was talking to this one guy there, and he had a decent-sized tank in his apartment. I was like, oh, yeah, because like, I'm always curious, like, how much can you sneak in there or whatever. And apparently, it every apartment in there legitly had a hookup for a fish tank, like a, a drain and water mid-wall. I was like, what? Wow. And, he, and he's like, yeah, the builder was actually an Aquarius, and it's in every suite. I'm like, that is awesome. So you can have your water change, everything right there, literally at your tank. That's like that's cool. I just yeah. had a second uh, nozzle, or whatever you call it, like a, a basically a splitter on the incoming cold mm-hmm. under the sink. I had yep. a splitter and connected it to the RODI. Yeah, I had a, a little tap. So you screw it in where your faucet handle is, and it screws right. in the bottom. It's like a little tap out the side with a little on and off valve. I hated that though. I used to do that, and it was just a pain in the butt. And so I added a, a splitter on the bottom, basically where it like where the cold water comes in. Mm-hmm. There's now a second faucet that's this whatever it is, three quarter inch uh, standard garden hose faucet. Yep. So I have a second nozzle yep. just to do it. Yeah, I, I used to do it by connecting it to the kitchen sink, mm-hmm. but my wife was not a fan of that. That was fair. <laughs> yeah. It's like the the for me the what I would do if I was an apartment. I'd probably be mounted under the kitchen sink and tap it into the lines and then just get like a 30 foot RODI line and just walk it over to wherever you need it rather That's than 
it, initially that's what I wanted to do, but you know, kids happen and I end up keeping cleaning supplies under there. Also, mm-hmm. I also tap I already tap my sink and it goes to my fridge. So I drilled, you know, like behind my counter and I run you know, I already tapped my sink, a cold water line, mm-hmm. to go to my fridge, to my ice maker. Yeah. So I figure tapping it twice is not a good idea. Water pressure alone. Is yeah. Sick. So I just kind of left that. It's not too bad. I keep my, because um, my apartment is towards the back of the building. So I keep a 20 gallon brew trash can on my fire escape mm-hmm. um, with all like my water chain stuff. I bring it in, set up the RODI. I do have like a 50 foot cable. That goes straight to my, you know, um, to like my auto top up. And mm-hmm. I use, I have all the upgrades, like a booster pump, um, water saver. So it can take me like within an hour, I can fill my 20 gallon ATO container and I can fill, you know, I think I need two or three hours to like make all the water I'll need each time. So that's not too bad. What I what I did with mine is I have a 15 gallon auto top off kind of behind the lazy boy thing in the corner of my room for my tank. And I put a float valve in it so I can literally just plug in my RDI, I walk away and then I don't have to worry about it spilling out. Because it takes because it takes a couple hours. So I can just go plug it in, go back to work, mm-hmm. let it do its thing. Mine takes forever, man. I need a booster pump. Yeah. yeah. 35 um psi so oh yeah that's low i'm at nine, i'm at 85 nine i know when mine drops to like 80 ish mm-hmm. is when it's dirty but uh, yeah i have a booster pump it makes a big difference i can fill a five gallon bucket in like 10 or 15 minutes like it's really fast yeah the pressure you get out of it does make a big difference pressure and temperature like i sometimes yeah. try to balance if you if i just turn on the cold water mm-hmm it can take a long time. If I try to balance and get, you know, get the water about 75, 76, it goes a lot faster. If I get the water temperature right, like now it's cold. Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible to get the water temperature right. But in the summer, if you can get the water temperature right and use the booster pump, it's almost like you just turn on the tap and you're just pour, just filling like a, 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 a something right under your tap. It goes so fast. Isn't it? I heard it's not good for your membranes, though, to have warmer mm. water coming through it. You're not doing hot. You just don't want to put 50 degree water through it. So I'm not doing hot. I'm just using, I use like a thermometer to get about 75, 76, mm-hmm. 77. But yeah, I'm not doing hot. I'm okay. not doing hot. I'm just trying to get, you know, not have it ice cold. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, so booster pump definitely will make a big difference if you're having the very slow flow. Yeah, I lost you for a second there, but... Yeah, yeah. I I dropped off. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with Google Hangouts. Um, Yeah, no, I think I need one. I just don't have an outlet under this. (laughs) You know, I was Mm -hmm. able to add a second uh, output there, but an outlet is kind of out of the question for now. So eventually, well, you know, eventually maybe I'll have a house with higher pressure. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, I basically have to hook it up overnight. It's kind of my yeah. well, if you get a booster pump, you know you you I I can almost guarantee you. There is no guarantees in this hobby, but <laughs> it'll probably take you thirty minutes, forty minutes to fill a five gallon bucket. Which currently takes pump. me about eight. Yeah, hours. <laughs> you just run an extension cord, put it in, and you'd be surprised how much. Um, water you make when you use a booster pump. Like you can have the booster pump connected, mounted, but only plug it in when you want that extra boost. Like you can have the booster pump plugged in and it's not running and it'll still make water. It'll still flow yeah. through it, but then yeah. you only plug it in when you need, you know, when you need to make water fast. Well, that thing is quick. I guess I just haven't had a reason it, to. Yeah, if, if you're you don't mind moving it overnight, that's fine. It, uh, do you guys pay for water out there? Like how much? No. Okay. It is more efficient with higher pressure. Like your membrane works at a higher efficiency. So technically you'd have less stuff coming into your DI resin. But um, yeah, someone's asking about the wastewater and I think you actually have less wastewater because it is more efficient at the higher. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, thankfully it's not a concern, although I would like to conserve water. It's not a cost issue. Yep. But right now, it basically takes me an hour a gallon or so. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so, that's a while. But yeah, yeah pressure no makes a big difference in speed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one day. Yep. <laughs> one day I'll have an outlet I can connect to post pump to. <laughs> yep. For now, it's kind of limiting. Mm -hmm. I that have happens. a little space here. I live in a shoebox. <laughs> it happens. Let me answer a question that Saltwater Piff had. Just bought my Pax Bellum N18 online. Anyone oh, got one. advice for success? Had one, sold it. Mm -hmm. um, if you just bought your Pax Bellum, that means you probably have the new one. Um, the one I had, you had to use like a metal sleeve to sort of block out the light. What I've seen someone done, the people at Manhattan Aquariums, what they've done is they took a razor blade and cut off like a little piece of the, um, like a like a thin strip, so you can actually see inside the reactor, so you don't have to open it to know when it's full. Um, I don't think it messes up the resale value too much. I always worry about that because I just I buy and sell stuff all the time, but cutting a little strip through like the kind of semi-transparent so you're talking about you like know. the white labeling on it yeah the white labeling it allows you to see when the chato reactor is full hmm. where you don't have to open it because the thing about chato reactors you have to actually open them clean them up and if you open it then it's not filled with chato that's disappointing like i i i would get annoyed mm -hmm. so um but you're probably going to get some supplements with it if your chato reactor stops if your Chato grows well for the first month or two months and then stops growing, you probably need to test iron and mm -hmm. Devin, whatever this other thing is that I can never is it pronounce. Is molybdenum, something like that? Molybdenum. Molybdenum. Let's say MB. MB. Yeah. Yeah. Um, molybdenum. 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 Yeah. That thing. Um, your Chato consumes that, especially when it's growing fast. So that's two things that you probably need to test. Well, you can mm. use iron as a proxy for Malib, Malib, MB. Yeah. <laughs> but the Pax Bellum is really nice. They're mm. really, really nice. It's like the Ferrari of Chato reactors. Yep. Not not cheap, but they're nice. Especially if you don't have, like, space for refugium. You know, you can get a lot in that tower. <laughs> yeah. I saw Ryan from BRS the other day said he's been trying to get um, Joe, the mm -hmm. guy who distributes Pax Bellum in the U.S., to get him to sell him to get brs to carry them yeah. and they just can't make them fast enough so oh, people really? are buying them yeah mm -hmm. what's um not pax bell and what's the other brand that's similar um ultra reef also you know um you have one of these ultra reef reactors right no i don't um the ultra reef reactor also makes i think they make like a connection that you can it's the same upflow principle. Make your own? You can get, yeah, well, yeah, you, you get a little thing that you insert in the middle. Ah, Pacific Sun, put your own sorry. LED lights in it. Um, but I, the, the ones I know, Skims make it. That Skims makes a commercial shader reactor that BRS sells. Mm -hmm. There's Bellum. And uh, I know Ultra Reef does it, but Ultra Reef doesn't sell in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. So in the US you only have two options for commercial. Um you have Skims and you have um Pax Bellum. P Pacific Sun. That's the other one. Cuz my buddy got one and I went over and I filmed a bunch one day but I never did turn that into a video. Maybe that's a Canadian thing. I don't think No, he sell... bought it from like Europe or somewhere. Oh, see. Europe you have a whole bunch of options. In the US, yep. because of some kind of patent thing, you can't get um you can't get too many options here. Oh, someone said manganese. Was that the one? Mm, I think so. It might be manganese. I yeah, think I can't remember. Both... It's iron or something else. When you buy a Pax Bellum, you get manganese, <laughs> iron, nitrate, and yeah. molybdenum. Molybdenum. That's what uh, Craig Gersrief said. Molybdenum. Molybdenum. <laughs> like denim. Okay. Yeah. All right, got it. Molybdenum. Molybdenum. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay, king of equipment. Oh, it's king of equipment. I'm only second. <laughs> you know what? I am. 2019 is the year of change. I've actually been going through <laughs> old pictures, Devin. Mm -hmm. 
when I was doing Zeovid two years ago, I think I had an awesome tank. Yep. And since then, it's been a comedy of errors, tank changes, light changes. Like, I was seriously thinking about the lights I've changed in the last two years. I've gone from a Kessel AP700 to Kessel 360s, mm-hmm. to Radeon V3s, to Radeon G4s, to Aquatic Life T5s, Kessel 360s, back to Radeons again. I've had Radeons the whole time. I can't keep up with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and what have you decided on out of all those lights that you tried? Radeons. Nice. Good choice. Yeah. Um, I also, I've done BRS two part, yep. I've done Zeovit, mm-hmm. I've done Triton, and now I'm doing Kalkwasser. But my best tank was Zeovit tank. Yeah. Okay. My best tank was a Zeovit tank, hands down. Money. Yeah, he dropped yeah. out again. I don't know what's happening. Skimmers, I lost track, Devin. I seriously mm-hmm. tried to like look at how many skimmers I've used since then and I think I lost track. Really? I've used three vertex, the one fifty the one twenty, one fifty, one eighty I. I've used a Tunzi. Um I've used two different ski- three different skims because uh, I had the skims internal, skims recirculating, and then another skims it's so okay, so which one's your favorite of all the skimmers you've used so far? Vertex Omega one eighty yeah. I. Oh, hands down. Mm-hmm. The Vertex skimmers, it doesn't it doesn't matter which one you use. The mm-hmm. Vertex skimmers, I think, are the best hands down. Yeah. They pull so much stuff. Um I just yeah. Question for you about 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 skimmers. Mm-hmm. Um do you believe in like oversizing? Like what do you think? I always well, okay. I've always bought a, a bit oversized because I don't think you can necessarily say on the tank size. I think it depends on the fish load at the end of mm-hmm. the day, right? So if you have a heavy, heavy stock tank, I think, you know, it's wiser to get a little bit bigger one. If you have a lightly stocked tank, then maybe you can get away with ones rated for your tank size. So I think that is one way looking at it. I also do question, though, if you can over skim or pull too much out of your water. Can your tank be too clean? And I think that's another big thing. I think there's some benefit to not having, you know, a super sterile particle free system. So uh, there is little things like that. I kind of think around it. So you could have a big one and run it last time. I just run mine as a super dry skim, which I feel is a good way to go about it. But if you did, you know, like a super wet skim on a big skimmer, I mean, you're pretty much doing a water change all the time with that. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty much in alignment with that. Um, Mm -hmm. I was having, I think I was having this discussion with Greg the other day and I don't mind having a big skimmer where it doesn't skim certain times of the day. I think when I was a newer reefer, I, I used to get worried. Like sometimes you'd come home and your skimmer wasn't skimming. So you'd adjust it. And then when you actually feed, it would overflow. Mm-hmm. But I don't mind if my skimmer doesn't skim consistently all times during the day. Like it skims when there's something to remove. And it doesn't skim when there's nothing to remove. And like you said, you could just choose to skim dry. So mm-hmm. I'm, I don't mind oversight. I mean, there's a point where, you know, like if you have a small tank and you buy a giant skimmer, you won't have a steady foam head. But I don't, I don't, I don't think you can oversize your skimmer to a point. I always oversize. Mm-hmm. Okay, so someone. Awoken was just saying skimmers are at 100% beneficial. And this is true in a way, right? Because skimmers don't discriminate. They pull out whatever organics want to go for a ride on their bubbles. Hmm. So it's make a, it's a foam refraction chamber, and your skimmer is mixing air and water together. You're making bubbles and little bits of organic attached to the bubbles, and they'll pop in your cup, and that's how you remove stuff from your water. But that could be taking out good stuff as well as bad stuff. So it doesn't really discriminate. Discriminate. So, I mean, if you are over skimming, you could be losing good stuff too. Oh, there's Greg. I just said his name and he showed up. He heard, Ooh, he heard you. Um, someone said Vertex and Nios skimmers essentially the same. I've I've held Nios. I've used Vertex. Let me. Vertex is the only skimmer, and I've I've purchased a lot that when they come, it comes fully assembled. 
Like that's how good the acrylic is. That it comes fully assembled. You literally all you do when you get it is you take it up, you put it in your your sump, and you plug it in. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to take it apart, put the pump in. It comes fully assembled. I've dropped the Vertex skimmer cup in my bathtub a couple of times and it did mm -hmm. not shatter. Like yeah. that thing is welded. Like I the Nio stuff seems well built, but I mm. haven't like day tested it to drop it and know if it breaks. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I was actually having an idea for skimmers, and I was calling up all the people who I've had Vertex skimmers who I sold them to. Mm -hmm. I bought a Vertex Omega One, the smallest Vertex skimmer, eight years ago. The guy still using it. Never had to even contact support of anything. That thing is still skimming away. Mm -hmm. No issues. Of course, he maintains it regularly, but yeah. Vertex skimmers, the quality of the acrylic, the quality of the pump. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know. I just I just think they're like I have a Royal exclusive now, and I'm I'm I like it, but mm -hmm. I just think hands down. I've never um, used a Vertex skimmer, but anything I've ever used from Vertex has been super high quality. Like it's been, you know, that extra level of like refinement to it. Like, they do make really nice stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. The one thing about Vertex, and it's not a knock. I, I was talking to Sabella about this. The vo the volute. The, the, volute. Um, on the pump, you can, like, turn the volute up and down. Mm -hmm. um, we I have no idea what that does. And um, <laughs> I was talking to Sabella Fella about this at Reefa Palooza last year. We don't know what that does. Mm -hmm. So we just tend to leave it, you know, halfway open or halfway closed but if someone from vertex can at least explain to us what that does that would be really helpful i've been using the skimmer for like years mm -hmm. and i don't know what the volute does um yeah it's i'm assuming that's where the air intake goes into there right like i'm assuming we just adjust your air volume of how much is going in no that's my only guess but <laughs> okay are you you know. that, that's my assumption, but I've never used it, so this is me just blindly guessing. But to me, it would be to just how much air it's sucking in. Okay. I've never... See, I've never gotten... Like, I always think, like, for instance, Sabella, Sabella thinks Vertex, the thing sucks so much air that he needs to restrict it. I think maybe because I always run my airline outside, that that, that counts as, like, a little bit of a restriction. But I just don't know what that does. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've never seen a big difference from opening or closing or playing with it. So I just tend to just leave it halfway. But yeah, for, um, Greg is saying they it's PVC welded. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, I guess thinking about it now, like there is looks like what it looks like a PVC like welded at all the seams. Um, but I don't know, man, vertex skimmers. I don't know of anything that's built quite like them. Like I said, I've mm -hmm. dropped mine a few, like the drop the skimmer cup yep. in the tub. I've dropped the skim skimmer cup in the tub and that mm -hmm. thing shattered and the vertex I've dropped it in the tub still. Yeah. Um, I'm not using it now, but if I ever had to, if you ask me what my dream skimmer is and what's the best skimmer I've ever held vertex. Okay. So Greg was saying it's adjustable venturi. It changes the air to water mixture. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess so. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, it controls the volute. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know. Tone. I've played with it, and I've never seen a difference, but mm -hmm. uh, it's worked for me. Excellent. Hey, if it works, it works. It works. All right, so you've been through... Okay. So you went through a bazillion lights, you settled on the Radions, you went through a bazillion skimmers, you settled on the Vertex. What else have you went through? To many um, O upgrades and swaps. Powerheads. Powerheads? Yep. So my, this one is a lot tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the flow of the gyres. Yep. I don't like the I, let me clean. I don't like um I, th they require a lot more maintenance than regular pumps i actually saw images devin of like the new third generation gyres and it looks like it has something of what it looks like a little hat mm -hmm. that yep. like that's I to kind of direct it so you can have it right along the top or type of thing 
I had a secondary thought that also probably prevented because we all run our when people run gyres, they run them so close to the top of the tank mm -hmm. that maybe it's so close to the light it gets extra algae growth. So maybe that'll mm -hmm. also prevent algae from growing in the pump. Oh, maybe. So that's what my thought when I see that. Like, okay, I still wouldn't go back to a um, gyre, but right now I like Vortec because yep. there are no cords in the tank. And they're Maybe, just easy to clean, which is Yeah, nice. I have extra wet sides, so I just swap them. But mm -hmm. you can name them. So if you ask me what my favorite pumps are that I love, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe it's me nostalgia from when I had the best version of my tanks, but Tunzi 6095s. Yeah. I like them because you can aim them. I don't like that they have, you know, cords in the tank, but um, if you have a black background, you, your tank is painted black, you can put them on the back, you can aim them. Um, they work well. They mm -hmm. work well when they're covered in coralline algae. I like the support from Vertex. Um, they don't break easy. Um, but so I think I'm going to go and say Vortex is my favorite and the one I've settled on and the one I'm going to use from now going forward. But there is a soft spot in my heart for Tunzi 6095. Yeah, that's fair. A lot of those, they just seem so big and like they stick out so much to me now after using Vortex and gyres for so long. Yeah. And even something like the the new AI pump that is so small. The, the Nero is super tiny. Yeah, I think I think Reef Community Worldwide is going to go. He's going to use two of those on the back wall of his tank, mm -hmm. which is going to be awesome. Yep. Um, I got yeah. one of my Nano and you don't even notice it's in there. It's so tiny. It's great. Yeah. Like it's I mean, it's not. It's about that big. It comes up about that high. Like it's pretty stealthy. It's like more pancake-ish compared to most pumps. Yeah. But... Seriously, if if the if the rotor or the blade wasn't like a teal color, that's a lot of people seem to complain about that. No, no, I don't complain about it. But yeah. I'm saying if it wasn't like that color, like mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't. Like you could be staring at the tank and don't even see it. Yeah. I um. Yeah. Well, it's because the. A lot of people, I've been asked this so many times, if do you see the impeller, do you notice it? And you don't really, because the light doesn't hit it. It's kind of recessed inside its little house. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really highlight it. So it's kind of in the shadow. So it doesn't seem like a big thing. So it doesn't fluoresce or anything? Yeah, exactly. So it's, I don't know. I think it's fairly stealthy, but it's a cool pump. Like, I don't know if any of you guys watched the, the video I did on it, but I can use it in my nano tank or I can use it and rock the whole water column in my 160 gallon tank or I can use my little 20 gallon tank. It's very versatile, which I like about it. But yeah, overall, it's my favorite. I like it, especially first. Okay, one one thing I'm just going to throw this out. Why I think it's good. It's harder because it's not the cheapest pump in the world. But if you have a smaller tank, you can buy it and use it in your small tank. And you're going to upgrade eventually because everybody does. You can still use it. And you upgrade again, you can still use it. So you can, the pump can grow with you. And I think that's a huge advantage to that pump. I will absolutely be upgrading. This 30 gallon is puny. And I yep. can't wait to get an upgrade. Yep. I just need a house. I know. <laughs> exactly. But I just think when I look back, you know, I went for a 12 gallon to a 16 to a 24 to a 30 to a 100 to what? 160 now. Like all the different tanks and how many times I've upgraded equipment. I'm, there's certain items where I'm like, if I would have bought this first, I could use it on every single tank and still did it um, instead of upgrading like 20 times. With all those upgrades, have you noticed like things such as a nutrient spike specifically? Have you had like nitrates just pop when you were moving things over to a new tank? If you, if I move to a new tank, I use like mainly new water, so it has been a big issue. But generally, if your tank's been running for a long time, and you have like lots of gunk and fish poop and all that stuff built up in your sandbag, and you disturb that, that can cause a big spike of stuff in your tank. That's one of the biggest things. So a lot of people always recommend using new sand when you move a tank. You can reuse it, but you want to wash it out really well and get all the gunk out of it if you're going to reuse it. Okay, so you wouldn't suggest just scooping it out putting it into a new aquarium and add water. Yeah, no, no I'd want to use new sand just because you're going to move a lot of stuff that's going to cause like nutrients in your tank that's yes. kind of like hiding in your sand bed because all that stuff builds up in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if I was going to do that, I would probably every week I'd just section like 10% of my sand and do that for like a few months at a time and try and clean as much as humanly possible if I was just going to reuse it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yes, you can, but you're just making issues for yourself that for the $40 of some new sand, you could just right. save the headache. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, you could absolutely wash it. Like if you just take, um, put it in a five gallon bucket of the garden hose and let all the stuff just keep percolating up. I mean, you can wash it. And I mean, I found I had to sit there for like an hour until it finally ran super clear, but with a garden hose, you'd be killing all the beneficial bacteria. Yeah. Right? You would just be cleaning your sand. There would still be, you'd kill the good bacteria, but like you'd be killing it. It'd yeah. Be... Like if I'm, want the bacteria like i'll usually put new sand in a tank and i'll just take a couple handfuls of the old sand and like throw it on the new sand bed just to let the spread the bacteria yeah but you still have a ton from your rocks and everything else right 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 mm -hmm. someone every time of i i i i i feel the same way dev a friend yeah. of mine told me the other day that you know he's he's thinking of moving and he's gonna take out the sand out of his tank the next few water changes because he thinks that'll make the move easier because then he just has the rock with the coral and the fish. Mm -hmm. That's all he has to worry about moving. Yep. And so, you know, the day when he's ready to move, when you're moving and you have kids, mm -hmm. um, when you get to the new place, maybe the tank you won't be able to focus on first and, you know, trying to scoop sand and, you know, doing all of that. So what mm -hmm. he's done is he's just kind of made his job easier up front by just not having to worry about sand. Yep. And his thinking is when he gets to the new place, he'll just plug in a power head and he could, you know, have the fish live in a tub or, you know, mm -hmm. it'll be easier to set up. Yep. I, I can imagine your wife will be upset if you get to a new place and your first priority is like getting the tank up and running. So if you just have rocks with coral, you could literally just stick them in the tank anywhere, put a power head on them and you know everything is alive and you can concentrate on other things versus having mm -hmm. to work about washing sand and moving sand and stuff like that yeah for sure i mean honestly i'd probably just buy new sand at that point and then just save the hassle mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah i'm really nervous about my move because i'm gonna have rocks covered in corals i'm gonna have a bunch of fish to worry about i'm just overall you know the last thing i want to worry about is a nutrient spike so i feel like getting new sand is just the safe way to go mm-hmm it really is. It's just less hassle. Yeah. And if you want to reuse it, I mean, you could always just wash it later on, then reuse it down the road. Um, Toonsy impellers are blue. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> They're much smaller, though. Um, yeah. I I, yes, I see the Nero, and I, the impeller color doesn't doesn't give me. I don't any mind it. That yeah. But I've been asked that. it so many times, so I had to bring it up oh yeah i think people who don't use it you you can foresee it as a problem but mm -hmm. i just i just just look when i saw when we saw it at magna was it i'm mm -hmm. just thinking like if you put it on the back glass it would be like if you, if the back of your tank is painted black and you put the nero on the back glass like other than the impeller you're not seeing anything yep exactly yeah. um so i do got to run pretty quick because i have some coming to pick something up in a few uh, uh, any other questions that you guys want us to hit before we part? Not partake. Say fairly well. <laughs> I think we got most of them. Rip, always appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for keeping the kids in line. Uh, just move five pounds of old sand. You get the benefit of established bacteria. Yeah, I mean, I would use some sand, right? I've always taken a few cups of it and just mixed it in just to do it. I'll never wash sand too much of a pain. It, it is a lot of work. I washed all my old sand and ended up just giving it away and trading it. K-Town got it all. He got the benefits of my endless washing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking of taking out my sand bed. I'm actually yeah. thinking, I'm I'm going, like, I'm thinking of going like full SPS dominant. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, like the whole BR thing of maybe taking out most of the sand. Not all of it, but most of it because I do have rasses. <sighs> I don't think I could get rid of all my sand. I just like the look of it so much. Yeah, maybe I like dusting and maybe in the back keep like some mounds of it. But yeah. looking the other day, I didn't realize how much of a sand bed I have. I think I have four inches in some locations. Um, so I didn't realize like how much sand I actually have. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I was thinking of at least taking some out, taking the top layer out. Yeah. All personal preference, but yeah. when when you see the tanks and the bottoms are covered in coral and stuff, it looks awesome, but a lot of time you see it and it's just like glass covered in coralline and I don't know. Does, yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, to, to me, does the sand just looks so much more natural and nice. I'm from Jamaica. I'm used to seeing sand. I like sand. <laughs> I just... So are you sick of sand, or does it make no, you feel no, at home no. to I'm have it? No, no, no. I'm thinking of taking some out for me. To... Yeah. Life. Loves it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love sand. That, mm. that, the, 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 I think when I was telling you, like, my powerhead choices, the reason I go back between, like, Kessels, I think, Kess, I think I've cycled through three different Kessel lights. The reason is... Some somehow Kessels on the the shipper from a Kessel on the sand bed to me mimics like you being out in the Caribbean sun on the beach. Like that's the closest mm-hmm. out to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like just the sh- the ke- the shimmer going back and forth. Um, but I'm over Kessel now. There's nothing wrong with Kessel, but um, sand and that shimmer is kind of what reminds me of the Caribbean beach the most. Mm-hmm. Nice. But yeah, I like sand. I just I got a ton of fish, and I just yeah. think you no, know, that's fair. That's if fair. it makes the tank easier to maintain, then it's you worth change it. a lot though. So I'm curious to see if you get rid of it and then bring it back. Uh, you know what? And that's <laughs> the thing also. That's the thing also. If you get rid of it, it's a lot easier to like put it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much. All right. Okay. I do got to run. I got something's popping by. I'm in like five minutes. To pick up something. So. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate okay. you hanging out through. Have fun, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good. 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 Hop on. Yeah, I'm glad. It's awesome. Yeah. Also, there... a question for chat. I'm gonna get some uh, Chinese food. What do you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> General oh, got... Chow or sesame chicken. Oh, uh, General Cho's, man. Yeah, that's the move, isn't it? That's right. the New York City standard, <laughs> man. That's the move. Okay, it's uh... decided. There you go. There's dinner. I got to figure out food now. All right, guys. Have a good night. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. All right. Take good night. Care,